Good evening, and welcome to the St. Petersburg By Night Podcasting Network. Tonight, we present to you our Werewolf the Apocalypse Chronicle, Rage Across Tampa. Welcome back, everyone, to the St. Pete by Night Twitch stream where we play St. Petersburg by Night, a massive multiplayer 5th edition chronicle set within the world of darkness in St. Petersburg, Florida. But tonight, we're going across the bay. We're going over to Tampa because this is Rage Across Tampa, our werewolf, the apocalypse 5th edition chronicle. My name is Kent also known as Michikent on all social media. I am the lead storyteller over here on St. Pete by Night. And uh, I am very, very happy and very, very excited for tonight's episode because in tonight's story, things are really going to start heating up in the case of Stheno versus the city of Tampa, or more appropriately, the state of Florida in regards to the attack at the energy plant. But before we get all to all that, go follow St. Pete by Night on all the social media listed down below. Go check us out on Twitter, which is now X, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and go catch up on all the old episodes of all of our St. Pete by Night content over on YouTube. But of course, I couldn't do this alone because if I did do this alone, it might as well just be a book or a book on tape or just a narration and you get sick of staring at my face eventually. So let's introduce the amazing players who make up Rage Across Tampa. Players, go ahead and introduce yourselves, if you please. Good evening, everybody. My name is Preston. I play Aiden Goodspeed, the Arun of the Gale Stalkers. Hi, everybody. I'm Champ, Champagne, Power Bottom at Rock Bottom. Whatever you want to call me. And I will be playing Aspen Weiss, Philodox of the Silver Fangs. Hi, everyone. I'm Simon. I'll be playing Joseph Ash Speaker, the uh, the Yerge from the Ghost Council. Unfortunately, our beloved Galliard, Nori, could not join us tonight, but we are hoping she will be back and healthy as ever next week. But it's okay. We've got the power bottom at rock bottom here tonight, so we are going to be just fine. So, it's been quite some time since the attack on the energy plant in Tampa. It's been quite some time since the members of Stheno, the hacktivist group which Malicious Jester takes ownership of or belongs to, were taken to jail, accused of being responsible for the crimes of bombing the plant while the PAC knows despite their involvement, that it was actually Ryder 
and his motorcycle gang that was responsible for that particular attack. Needless to say, something has to be done, and through an effort and a social media campaign launched by Malicious Jester, she was able to raise quite a bit of money, including a very large anonymous donation from someone in the St. Petersburg region. The money was raised, and legal counsel was granted. Now, Hart & Associates, the law firm that Aspen works for, stepped up to take on the case, offering to do so pro bono, but the extra funds from the fundraising campaign could help in maybe staging or putting together a case to help get the members of Stheno out of jail. In the meantime, the cairn is starting to be built. The process has begun. Various idols and sigils and rituals are taking place all around the area that was formerly the cairn of the Sept of the Weeping Willow, but that had fallen dormant after the last members of the cairn had either abandoned the site or had been killed. With that process comes a lot of effort from Joseph and Eliza in putting together the cairn, in negotiating with its spirit, Grandmother Willow, to return to its place of prominence, a place of power, a passage into the Umbra, a place to commune with the spirits, the beating heart of this region for the Guru. Then there's Ryder, the one really responsible for the attack, one who time was this pack might have called enemy, might have pointed the finger at and blamed as responsible for all of the wrongdoings that had happened since their arrival as a pack. Someone they could have faulted for all of this. But has he turned over a new leaf? After speaking with Aspen recently, it seems he's fallen into line. He's offered his help with the members of Stheno in lockup by providing protection in the terms of some of the motorcycle gang that are currently sitting in jail. Also a means of communication from Jester to her friends in lockup and vice versa. Tonight, our story begins outside of the Memorial Gardens that is to be the home of the Cairn, where we find Aiden and Joseph having just arrived using Joseph's car to get there. Their intentions are to speak with the spirit and to hear the spirit's words and thoughts about the possible proposition that Aspen made that Ryder join the Sept once more, its former leader now just acting as a follower in the efforts to reawaken the Cairn. So as you stand outside of the Memorial Gardens, it's, it's warm, but there is an overcast of clouds that kind of hang up in the sky above. It's early afternoon at the point that you arrive. The grounds are usually pretty quiet, Joseph. You've gotten a pretty good feel for the schedule, and being a weekday, there aren't a great many visitors that come through here except for the occasional funeral, but those seem to be far off, and having kept an eye on the schedule, it doesn't look like there's one on this particular day, so that should afford some privacy and some opportunity to be unhindered by any watching eyes. With that, the scene is yours as you stand just inside the entryway to the Memorial Gardens, some distance away from the approach to Grandmother Willow. So is there anything special that we have to do before going in? Um, just Anna, respectfully, we don't have any specific rights for entry just yet. Um, she doesn't seem to be the kind of spirit that really wants specific things. Um, we'll just go in with, with respect and I'll see if we can get her to um, talk to both of us. 
Okay, I'll just um I'll let you do most of the talking then. Okay. Yeah. Well, come on in. So putting the car back into drive, you drive further in to the memorial gardens, kind of making your turn around some corners, Spanish moss hanging down from the trees, providing the same curtain that you stepped through or drove through last time, Joseph, as you approached the tree. And just in the same fashion, as you kind of make your final approach, you can see the large willow standing sentinel, unsurrounded by any other trees for some great distance. Pulling the car into park, making sure not to hit the curb like Eliza did last time in a disturbing manner. You put the vehicle into park and climb out. And there she is. Still as ever, a slight breeze stirring the leaves in her branches, which seem to have grown quite significantly, Joseph, since the last time you were here. You can see more of the, the branches are filling out with the buds and early blossoms of leaves that have continued to grow in since you last appeared or visited. She's doing good. She's growing. She's pretty. Yeah, it's just beginning to. I'm going to walk up quietly and respectfully until he gets just to her roots. Take a deep breath. Grandmother, uh, this is Aiden, Goodspeed. He and I seek an audience to ask some advice. The breeze picks up again, and you hear kind of a slight creak from some of the branches, and the leaves within the branches kind of whisper softly in like a rustling fashion. And kind of almost on the wind itself, you hear the word, Speed. Were you able to hear that, Aiden? Was was I able to hear that? Yes, you were able to hear that. I uh, yeah, the, the wind talks. Like I yes. know mine talks, but okay. Good, we're ready. Um, grandmother, we we seek information about Ryder. We knew you knew him in the past, and, and he has changed, I'm sure, since then, but you'd like to know what you know and what you feel of him. Another kind of gust of wind comes through, but this time it's almost like a, a cranky creak coming from the limbs of the tree, almost like a, a groan of the tree itself in protest to a slight degree as if it doesn't want to even touch on this particular subject. A couple of the leaves almost kind of break off and start to float down one of them kind of landing on your shoulder, Joseph, the other kind of pressing against your chest, Aiden. And in the wind, you hear the word, eat. Did she say eat? Joseph will nod and he'll eat the leaf. Uh, not rabbit food. Are you serious? Be respectful, Aiden. He'll take the leaf off and reluctantly eat the leaf. As the leaf touches your tongue, it's it's kind of papery, but also a little bit smooth and damp on the surface of the leaf. I'd like both of you to make composure and resolve checks, please, as you can feel kind of a strange taste on the surface of the leaf itself start to kind of soak its way into your mouth. Okay. 
Joseph, you have a choice in this matter. You could accept what is clearly about to happen as you can feel the chemical taste kind of start to fill your mouth, or you can repel it. Aiden, you're not lucky enough to have that choice, unfortunately. I'm going to ride it. Okay. So even though you have the force of will to repel the toxins that have started to enter your system, you accept them welcomely, and you feel your vision kind of start to blur. Both of you kind of feel a haze starting to come across your view, and you feel like your mind is swimming as if a fog is kind of starting to overtake it. Kind of trying to blink the, you know, tears that are starting to form in your eyes. When you open them again, everything's changed. You're standing right where you are at the base of the tree, but around you, the grounds seem to have changed. The seasons themselves seem to have changed and you're not alone standing at the base of the tree is a young rider or at least a younger rider except this rider seems to have his in a good majority of his face wrapped in bandages you can see the blood like the bloody stain of kind of seepage from what it was probably the burn scars kind of pressing against the bandages. Stabbed in the ground in front of him is the clave. Long, sharp, and silver, slightly embedded in the ground. He stares up at the tree, and all you can see is a pure, white, hot, rage in his eye. The one eye that is exposed and unbandaged. Are you happy now? They're all dead. They're all gone. We gave you everything. Is this what you wanted? He picks up the clave, kind of pulling it from the ground. I could destroy you right now for everything you have cost me. I don't need you. I can do this on my own. He starts to kind of raise the clave as if he's going to swing it. And then you can find, kind of see his fingers loosen and weaken. And the clave just slip from his hand, dropping to the ground as he kind of falls to his knees. They're all gone. And just like the rush of the breeze and the rustle of the leaves, it kind of disintegrates in memory. He just kind of disappears, him and the clave both breaking away into little, be little bitty pieces before it completely dissipating. You feel the, the toxins kind of push themselves through your system, and you're not sure if it was only just a few minutes, or it could have been hours that had passed. But you're standing exactly where you were, in front of the tree. That was the last time I saw Ryder. The voice kind of emanates almost as in like an echo or a whisper in your minds. The last bits of the toxins kind of working their way through your system. 
He blamed me for what had happened. For all that he'd lost. But I still stand here today. He couldn't do it. There is a voice in our pack that seeks to redeem him, to help him, and part of that would be possibly opening him up to the Sept when we get to that point. And I do not have enough experience with someone of his nature to know if this is a worthy quest. Long has he wandered, untethered. He broke his ties to us. And yet, his ties to the wolf remain. Is redemption possible? Yes, to those who seek it, truly seek it. But he could also just be returning to finish what he could not all those years ago. To his credit, he did not ask to be invited. He's not seeking this. Those amongst us who brought up the idea have not invited him yet. There's a hope that he, if he feels he belongs, we might be able to walk down that road. I have my hesitations, to be very honest. Uh, what we have here is so new that I I fear risking it. But I also see the importance of not turning our back on another one of the few left. What about you? Um, just this is weird. Um, I uh, feel that there is a what he did was wrong, but what he is is someone that's prone to those emotions but he did not act upon it and I think that side of him that held back is still there and he might just feel bad for what he's done he might want to just apologize for what has happened just like if a he was broken off from the nation itself um, just like if a branch here were to break off it can be regraft in with the right people and the right care. I think that we might be able to make this happen, but 
if this ends up being a poisonous branch, it can be removed. That confident are you? You know what they say? Three three parts uh, confident, one part fool. Every pack needs an Aaron. So what is it you seek from me? A blessing? Yeah, I guess permission that when we get established and we start, you know, opening the door to know whether or not he'd be welcome back in. Or what terms you would have set for him. He served us well for many years. We do not forget our memories like our lives are long. But he did turn on us. He did abandon us. Left us here to wither and die. To watch him walk away. What would you do, Ash Speaker, Frost Howler? What would you do? Penance of some kind. Likely uh, service. I was going to say uh, uh, a show of being want, uh, the wanting to do better, to be better. I feel like there is something there. Right of contrition in our traditions. Perhaps. If he is willing to do this right, if he is willing to come forth of his own accord, commit himself to the process, to the can, to the war, to the fight, if he is willing to swear his loyalty and show remorse, then yes, he will be welcomed. But be wary. There is a lot of pain there. And not all wounds heal. Some continue to fester and slowly bleed just like Gaia's wounds. It will be some time before we are ready. Are you sure he can be patient? That'll be the first test, won't it? We yes. have time to watch him. Yes, I suppose it will. We thank you for your wisdom, Grandmother. 
Is there anything additional you need from us? Survive. You can do that. With that, you kind of feel the rustling through the trees and the last kind of echoes of that word survive kind of float on the wind and out of your mind and once again you simply stare at the tree still as can be you make your way back to the vehicle climbing in starting the engine and making the drive out are there any other words you would speak to one another as you kind of make your way back? You handling okay? Well, the leaf tasted really gross. Your your leaf tea is actually better than that. Yeah, there was um, a hallucinogen on that. A what That's what you... Uh, um, special medicine makes you see something that's not there. Or okay. another... Not yeah. time travel, what we did. No, that... no, yeah, we, we saw a memory. Dang. Um, kind of like the mushrooms that you probably were taught not to eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, how much does she know about us? Uh, that's a great question. Um, she was the spirit here when the old Karen was here. So, yeah, probably a lot. Um, us personally uh, depends on how far her branches reach but she knows what we are and a lot of our ways and traditions she called me something I haven't been called for a very long time she probably recognized your scent there is a way for spirits to know things from the other side that doesn't make sense to us so lying to her would not yeah don't do that okay. do not do not honesty and directness helps um, you might be able to hold back something but it's not a good idea um, especially with someone as powerful and as important as her okay Just be honest I can do that yeah you, you did good you did good okay I know it's weird, but it's no more weird than growing to be nine foot tall and putting your claws in somebody. No, that's that's natural. That felt this. This off. is too. You just got to get used to it. This is part of us. Uh, okay. You'll get there with time. It'll put on some music. With an unsettling thought kind of mixing around in Aiden's head, as well as the remembrance of a name that had seemed to have gone unspoken. The pair make their way back to their homes, to their lives, and to their preparations. Near downtown Tampa, in a small office, in a very small office building surrounded by giants, both literally and metaphorically, we find Hart and Associates, the law firm tasked with the case of defending Stheno against not just the city of Tampa, the state of Florida, but against Edward Bateman, the special prosecuting attorney that was assigned to the case of investigating this explosion. Inside the office, Aspen, you find yourself with Rachel, also known as Rachel Hart, the lead lawyer of Hart and Associates in her office, where there are just stacks and stacks of files that have already started to accumulate, all of them having to do with this particular case. Every bit of research that can be found about the individual members of Stheno, an entire recorded history of their social media presence, 
all of the pieces are starting to take shape. Rachel stands behind the desk, desk looking over one of the documents in a folder. She's wearing a button-up white shirt that is slightly unbuttoned at the top, her long kind of dark brown hair hanging loosely down to her shoulders. She's wearing what seems to be a pencil skirt that goes just to above the knee, as well as some heels that kind of make her a little bit taller than she is, but she seems confident in this environment. She seems steadfast, sure, and steady, and undisturbed, even by the massive amount of work she has in front of her, and the massive amount of work you have in front of you. She kind of looks up from the file dubiously to you. Are you sure about this, Aspen? I'm as sure as I'll ever be. When you said you had a special project that you needed to see to, I didn't expect it to be something of this magnitude. This has the potential to be one of the biggest cases we've ever taken on. I understand that, and I know it's a lot, so I thank you. Um, but it just, it seems wrong. Maybe, but they've been our clients before, and I didn't get any bad feelings from them then. Exactly. It's going to get a lot of press. I know, um, and I, I hope you're okay with that, because that's going to put us in a very precarious situation. never cared about wins or losses, you know that. And press is... No news is good news. We're here to do what's right. And if you think this is right, you know I trust you. And so far as I can tell, looking over their histories, you know they've been picked up on unlawful assembly in the past, it seems. But nothing... Nothing serious. Nothing problematic right they're they're activists they're not domestic terrorists no well first things first we have to get to them now i've already called ahead to the hillsborough hillsborough county jail and i've made arrangements to see them tomorrow so i'd like you to go over first thing and try to get to each of them, talk to them, see if you can find out any information about what's been going on in there. I'll see if we can get a bail put together. The funds we received from the anonymous donations, the internet donations, uh, it's quite a hefty sum, but they may not want to let them go especially considering the weight of the case and the fact that they're still looking for Jester. Right. I understand. But um, should be able to get them out on bail um, after their arraignment, at the very least, as long as they're not going to leave the city or the state or the country. Well, that's what I'm pushing for, is to get the arraignment moved up. They can't allow them to wait any longer. It's been months at this point. Okay. I'll make some calls. I'll see if I can head over and speak to the judge personally. See if we can get that arraignment moved up on the docket. And see if we can get them out on bail as soon as possible. But you need to talk to them. Make sure that they're being treated well. See what they've said they've been coerced into anything or if they're what the kind of questions they're being asked because we can't mount a proper defense unless we know what they're coming at us with. So right. Maybe, though I doubt it, maybe Bateman slipped up just enough to give us an idea what he's looking for. Unfortunately, I think he's smarter than that, but... Um... Oh, 
I we know can maybe he glean is. something. Right. Okay. So what do you need? How can I help you on this? I trust you to go do this by yourself. Um, would it be all right if I brought somebody with me? As a, th a third party. Who? His name is Joseph. He doesn't even work here? No, um, but he's interested and he's a third party and I did my research and that is something that can be allowed. Um, Do you think it's a good idea? I think he has a unique perspective that w could benefit us. Yes. Is he going to law school, a student or something? I would say he, he dabbles um, in politics. haven't questioned your methods before. Why should I start now? Okay. Uh, what's his full name? I gotta have him put on the list at the jail. Oh, um... Uh, Joseph Ash Speaker. He works at the... Uh, or did work previously. I think he still works there. They moved recently. Um... He works at a shop. And I will say the name of the shop. Okay. Joseph Ash Speaker from Dysfunctional Grace. Right. I'm never going to hear the end of this. You realize that, right? I think we can keep it discreet. Client, attorney, privilege, and all of that. You know how it goes. Sure, yeah. I've just been in the jail enough times. The uh, the guards know my face, and I'm sure when they see an Ash speaker... You know what? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be great. Okay. Well... Here's a couple of visitor badges, and she kind of pulls open one of the drawers and pulls out these kind of clip-on badges. This should uh, at least get you through the first security checkpoint. They'll need ID, no weapons, you know the procedure. Okay. Um, she kind of closes the folder and drops it down on the pile on the desk. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm better. That's good. A lot a lot better than I have been recently. I know I've been kind of um MIA a little bit, but I'm doing better. I know it took some adjusting when you came out here. Are you settling in okay? Yeah. Yeah, I got a place um i've made some friends um which you know i love doing uh, <laughs> but it's been good it's been an experience but it's it's been good and uh who's the guy who brought you one of those friends just a friend Friend is, is a word. Okay. Well, I've been, I've, I've been missing you, and I worry about you. Yeah, I know. Um, I'll, I'll try to be around more, especially with this case. It's going to take a lot of work, so I, I, I'll be around a lot more. Um, but you don't have to worry about me. I've, I've got good people around me. Well, I'm still your friend. I know. Not just your boss. Okay. Well, if you need anything, you know I'm here for you. Whatever you need. I had hoped bringing you out here was going to give you a fresh start. And I just want to make sure you're doing okay. Absolutely. I appreciate you more than you know for that. Um, and we should 
get out of work and do something together soon. Well, we're diving into the thick of it, and she kind of pats the stack of folders, so as soon as we can get above water again, definitely. I'd like that. I really want Absolutely. to catch up. Girl talk, you know. It's been a... It's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really has. Um, I'd like to tell you more about some of the people I've met. Um, I do have a, a favor, though. Okay. Could you get me as much as you can, um, also a copy of the case file, if you wouldn't mind, um, but as much as you can on Bateman and Associates and his credentials and uh, where he went to school, those kind of things? Yeah, should be easy enough. I mean, Previous cases, things like that. He's pretty prestigious, so yeah, I can do that. Perfect, that'd be great. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I've got all your, I'll get Joseph Ash speaker added to the list for tomorrow. Um, yeah, find out what you can. I really want to get this over as quickly as possible. I do not like long drawn out fights with them and that's their specialty. So if right. We can... If we can get them out of the clutches of their questioning at the very least uh, that can give us a, a breather to really look things over and get a good case going yeah well okay i won't keep you from your friend but uh let me know how it turns out tomorrow okay i will I have absolutely to head over to the courthouse now i've got another case that i'm taking care of at the moment, but hopefully that'll be wrapping up and we can put our full attention on this until it's over. Yeah. Perfect. I will let you know what happens. Okay. It's good to see you, Aspen. It's always good seeing you. It gives me some normalcy in the crazy. We all could use a little bit of normalcy, that's for sure. Yes, yes, we could. <laughs> and with that, she kind of heads over and grabs her purse and like a coat from the from a uh, coat rack right next to the door well let me know if you need anything uh, there's a copy of the case file on the left pile uh, right on top for you so that should have everything you need and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow perfect yes that she heads up she's uh, Aspen's gonna immediately take the the case file and kind of start combing through it getting everything ready for tomorrow everything she could possibly find out so after you look over the, the case file you kind of pack it up putting it into your bag and make your way outside and heading over to the parking lot you can see Regina with Artie kind of sitting on the hood and he seems to be talking but to no one in particular as he kind of pats the hood and as you approach you kind of overhear him saying your cousins are weird. So, like, we... We had to take a ride from somebody else, and I know you're still mad about that, but... Don't worry. They they weren't the chatty type. Seeing you approach, he kind of hops off the hood. Hey, uh, how'd it go? Uh, pretty well. It went, it went well. I have some things to look over. Um, I guess I'm going to meet with people tomorrow, so that'll be interesting. Meet with people where? At the jail, uh, with Jester's friends. I don't like that. It's part of the job. Yeah, it was part of the job until we found out that it was the, the leeches. Mm -hmm. Still part of the job. I didn't say which job. I guess that's fair. We'll hop in. And he yeah. kind of walks over and actually opens the passenger door for you. She'll hop in and she'll like pat the dashboard. She'll close it and walk back around and hop in. So, um, what are the odds you can get them out? You think? Um, the problem is the 
the way everything happened. They could be seen as violent individuals, so bail could be really difficult. Um, but we could make a case for them having some sort of house arrest or something along that lines until trial, because it's not going to be a bench trial. We're going to have juries. We're going to have all of that. It's a pretty high profile case. Um, but at least we can get them out, of, out on bail. Then we can get a breather, really lean into who Bateman is and what their end goal is. Um, and then make our case from there based off of what we can know and what I can tell um, and try our best. Uh, I'm hopeful, but it's going to be dirty. Well, dirty is what I do best. Well, it was before you came into my life, but you know. You know, I have that effect on people. Jester seems really shook up about this. She hasn't been around as much lately, spending a lot of time with Leon. Right. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to talk to her about a few things. I think, I don't know, girl time might be good. Sure. I'll have, uh, you know, Aiden and Joseph over for a, a boys night. We'll, uh, you know, crack a few beers and watch the sports ball and, uh, no, we're probably not going to do any of that. We'll probably stay at our separate homes. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that 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 sounds fun. Yeah, because she hasn't even heard about the whole uh, thing about Ryder that I proposed. I haven't been able to talk to her about it. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting conversation. Oh, I know. I'm hoping I can talk to them tomorrow get some good news at the very least so I can make like a, you know, good bad news sandwich. Oh yeah, like soften the blow a little bit. Give the good right. news and then you lay it on and then wrap it up with something good too. Yeah. Right, okay. exactly. Okay. okay, I got that. Um, well, you know I'll go with you wherever you go. And I think your head's in the right place. I can't help but think how it go could go wrong, but... No matter what, I'm, I got your back. I know you do. I know. And uh, it's, it's also nice to do something I'm good at. Well, I can think of a couple things you're good at besides that. It's something I've been... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, he kind of starts up the car and starts driving. Hey, um, uh, I want to show you something. Okay, sure. On the trip back from Oregon, you showed me where your change happened. Seems only fair I return the favor. Yeah, okay. With that, he kind of drives out of downtown into one of kind of the neighboring neighborhoods. And as he does so, he kind of pulls down a street that has several kind of worn down duplexes. You can see that they are in I wouldn't say disrepair, but they're at the kind of bare minimum standards of being upkept. And as he's kind of driving along, you could see that the kind of complex that all these duplexes are in are near what appears to be one of the busier roads that kind of move to and from out of Tampa. And he stays on the side road and pulls into a parking lot and eventually stops in front of a duplex that's kind of the last one on the corner. The duplex is painted like a, a robin's egg blue, but the paint looks like it's faded quite a bit, and you can kind of see some of these blackish smudges around the corners from the salt air. It kind of leaves this weird, thick residue. 
And as he pulls in, he kind of brings the car to a stop. This is it. Home sweet home. That was my room. And he points up to the second floor to kind of a small window that seems to be facing out more towards the highway. My brother and I shared a room growing up. It was a small place. You know, we couldn't afford much. And with dad not around and mom working all the time, sometimes she'd let us <laughs> split up long enough for her and she'd sleep on the couch, especially if she had a long night, so that we could have our own beds. It's been a long time since I've been back. We would walk down to the park a few blocks from here and <laughs> so when I changed <sighs> shortly after mom had passed and I was just getting really overwhelmed you know I had to provide, take care of my brother. I wasn't ready to be an adult. I was and I wasn't, and you're taking care of mom, and I did what I had to do, but I didn't expect to have to grow up as fast as I did. I'm fine taking care of myself. I can take care of myself. No problem. I learned that when I was really young, even before my brother was born. But... I'm just glad nobody else got hurt. Yeah. I'm... I'm sorry you didn't have somebody there for you. Yeah. I really thought I was a freak <laughs> for those first few weeks. Like an oddity, like a monster movie. I didn't even know that there could be others, would be others. Eventually, I kind of felt a pull and that's when I found Regina in a used car lot not that far from here and when a car starts talking to you you either think you're going crazy or you just think you're going crazier because you've already been a werewolf for a while now and you've been scavenging out of trash as a dog but she told me and explain to me that I wasn't the only one. If anything, she's the one who raised me after I had been the one doing the raising for my brother. And then she told me that there were others and she told me where I could find them and that's how I found my way to my first mood. And there were so many, <laughs> so many others found out there was in fact an entire tribe of others like me and that was that made it a little bit easier and they told me I could come live with them but I I couldn't bear the thought of not being here so after that week with them I came back I'd already learned how to rely on myself pretty well. I was getting set up okay, and I made do. But I'm glad not to be the only one now. Around here, at least. Well, I'm glad you stuck around to find all of us. Yeah, me too. Hey, um, 
Can I do something stupid? I mean, you do that anyway, so you don't need my permission. He kind of takes your hand. And as he does so, you can kind of feel a slight shake in his hand as he grabs yours. Ah, oh, fuck it. And he leans over and kisses you. She, like, is shocked a little bit, but then leans into it. After a few moments, he kind of sits back and... <sighs> wow. Um... Listen, I just wanted to make another good memory here. Instead, we made a great memory, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and with that, you can kind of see him starting to blush a little bit. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Me too. Just tell me you'll be safe tomorrow, okay? Absolutely. I'm in my element. I'll be fine. Okay, let's let's go home. Yeah, okay. And with that, he kind of takes one last look at the house and then puts the car in reverse and backs out of the parking lot and the two of you drive back to his apartment. She'll, she'll grab his hand. I'm glad I taught, I, I took you here. I want you to know me. Like, I feel like I'm starting to know you. And it means a lot that you're opening up to me. Yeah. And it, it means a lot that you're willing to talk to me about it. I can't think of anything I wouldn't be willing to talk to you about at this point. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, you are my leader after all. Not gonna, is, is this going to cause like a um, work imbalance? Like, is this, is this, um, you know, should, should we have like a, 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 a werewolf HR? No, no, we shouldn't. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. And with that, you head off and we are going to take a quick five minute break in the second half We'll return with Aiden making a visit to someone that could be considered problematic in the past, but hopeful for the future when he goes to see Ryder. And Aspen and Joseph head to jail. We'll be back in just a few moments. Come back at about five. See you soon. St. Petersburg by Night is brought to you through collaborations with our partnered vendors. Wolfpack Dice, Ember Fox Dice, Dragon Ink Dice, Farrah the Bard, Champs Tramps, Pantry Artista, Chromatic Creations. Links to our partnered vendors, as well as our Twitch and YouTube channels, can be found on our website, stpbynight.com. The official theme song for St. Petersburg by Night is Vampire by Faith and Failure. You can find them at faithandfailure.com. You can follow St. Pete by Night on all socials with the hashtag St. Pete by Night. If you wish to support our program, you can do so at ko-fi.com slash St. Pete by Night to help keep the stories rolling. We are back. Hope everybody enjoyed their break. Got up, got a moment to stretch their legs, get something to drink. As we return, Aiden, you've kind of had this urge to talk to, maybe even confront Ryder about what his intentions are for this pack, the pr protective nature you've had over this group of individuals you've found, your found family, has kind of compelled you to take a little bit more of an active role to assess threats 
firsthand before they become too problematic. After the experience of rescuing your family, after the respect shown to you by your father, after finding your role as kin seeker, you now find yourself outside of the motorcycle club once more. Seems to be a little bit busier. Some of the other bikers have returned, as you can see several motorcycles parked in the parking lot, and you can kind of hear the music, though not as loud emanating from inside of the black painted and shuttered building. This evening, clouds have really firmly settled over the city. You can tell that there's a storm on the horizon, hoping that it is just a literal storm and not something more. You make your way towards the door leading into the building. As you open it, the music kind of comes washing out over you. Heavy drums, bass, and a squealing electric guitar casting the symphony of some hard rock anthem blaring from the jukebox within the bar. You can hear some voices talking, and as you walk in, you can see that the pool table in the center of the room seems to have been transitioned into a poker table. As you can see, cards are kind of spread out, and several of the bikers are looking over their hands and passing chips, moving them to the center of the table. You've seen this exercise done before, perhaps while watching TV or in movies, but you've never really quite gotten a grasp of the game just yet. They seem to just have these little pieces of cardboard with numbers on them and faces. As you make your way in, one of the bikers kind of goes to stand up, but then seeing it's you, kind of jerks his head towards the hallway that leads into the back room before sitting back down and continuing to play. You make your way down the hallway until you reach the door that leads into the, the, the back storage room. You can see that the door is slightly ajar, and as you kind of go to knock from inside, you hear Ryder call out, Come on in, pup. I've been waiting for you. He'll just push the door open. Ryder is kind of seated at that same long folding table as before, and you can see that he is kind of assembling and clean or disassembling and cleaning what looks to be a revolver of sorts that he has spread out in pieces on the table. You want something to drink? Have you tried beer yet? I heard that it's not necessarily good for the pieces in you. Well, if we're going to have this talk, you should. And he kind of turns around and opens what looks to be a cooler that has been placed on the ground next to it. You can feel kind of the cold air come out of the cooler uh, as several ice bags seem to be placed in surrounding several beers and he reaches down and grabs one and grabs another and then pops the top of both and sets one across from him on the table have a seat door open or close do i need to leave it open that's your choice it's you're in charge here close it this is a uh, family business. Shut the door and walk over to the table. You don't like me, do you? Not that I dislike you. Cut the I... crap. You're mad at me for what I did. For what we did. Yeah, it was dishonest. We don't what, do that to our own. We didn't do it to our own. We did it to them. You didn't tell us what was going on. You kept us out of practices that could have got us all hurt. 
someone did end up getting hurt, maybe involuntarily, but you did hurt someone of one of us. That's dishonest. That your honor is corrupted at this point. My trust for you is minimal. I can't hear you. If someone took your family from you, hurt them, destroyed them in front of your very eyes, would you hold back? Right or that did happen. My family was taken. And when it came to it, I went in with people that I trusted and took care of the problem. Did I want to rip them apart? Absolutely. But what would that ultimately solve? More bloodshed just creates more bloodshed. Killing for no reason serves no purpose. I have a reason. We all have a reason. Okay, the other people that were affected by it? Yeah, okay, you took you got some good revenge. And I, I get that. I get the overall anger. I understand. I feel it constantly. But what about all the other people that got hurt because of it? Those people didn't do anything to us. They just exist. Do you think it's just the leeches that destroy this world? No, I've I've seen people doing it. I'm out I'm out in the thick of it. I'm in the bush. I'm I see it. But there are other people who aren't doing that. They I've seen people go out and pick up the trash. I see people trying to make a difference. Those people don't deserve to get hurt because of some other person affecting it. That's not our choice to make. Our choice is to clean up the messes as they show up, not prevent all other messes, because that's just going to create more problems like it did. You're right. There are good people. People who are trying to make a difference. But this is war, son. And people I'm get hurt son. in war. People get hurt in war. Now, you're right. You're right about Jester's friends. They didn't need to take the fall for what we did, and I didn't want that for them. They weren't there. They shouldn't have gotten caught up in all this. But that's the way the leeches play the game. They never attack directly. They attack through the things that we are sensitive to, our vulnerabilities. That's why we can't have vulnerabilities. You're saying you don't have any? Not anymore. So was someone else supposed to take the fall that night? Is that what the plan was? He said it wasn't supposed to be Jester's friends. Ideally, nobody would have taken the fall. We did what we had to do. We got out.
I told Aspen I would play nice, and I have. But playing nice just buys time. Time for them. Time for them to make their plans and their schemes, and for them to strike back. Doesn't time work both ways, though? No. If they have time, we have time. They have more time than us. I'm still new to the whole concept of time, but if we both are in the same time, we have time. We're building something we, that takes time. They don't age. They don't get older. They don't get sick. They have all the time in the world, and they've taken it whenever they've needed to. We can't hesitate when it comes to fighting them. Hesitation gets us killed. I I agree. It does. Our role is to protect. It's to go out and be that wall so nothing else can get to the ones we care about, right? The wall needs to just stand there. Being the battering ram just gets you beat as well. And if you fall, then there's nothing else standing between. You know, just as well as I do, the others, they're not made like we are. We have that constant anger that we can use. And we can do incredible things with it. But if you just give into it like you have been... You're hurting everyone else around you, including the other guru. And I, I appreciate you playing nice and agreeing with Aspen to do the things that you have been doing. But you're, I'm, I'm curious, you've been alone for this long and you've been, like you said, you've been doing the work. You want to come be here with us. Why? Because I've been alone for so long. Because no amount of allies, as long as they're not us, can do the job. Those guys out there, yeah, they're my brothers, have been for a long time. But they don't know like we know. And I don't know where you heard that, Aiden, but we're not the wall. We're the wolf, the hunter, and the leeches are the prey. A wall stands there. It just stands there. And leeches go around walls. They go over walls. They go under walls. They go through walls. We have to hunt or we become hunted. You should know that better than any. If you wait for the prey to come to you, you're going to wait forever, and you're going to starve. I 
I it's practiced patience once, and it cost me everything. I stayed my hand when I should have struck, and it cost me everything. It cost us war. Some of my old allies. Members of the sept that was. We come upon some information. About where the leech is. We're setting up shop. I said we should strike. Strike them during the day when they're sleeping. But of course, like the cowards they are, they hid behind the humans. Surrounded themselves with Servants, I'm sure. I wanted to strike. They told me to wait. They, like you, were worried about who we might hurt. Were worried about the ramifications. Now, I was the leader. I could have called for the hit, but I wasn't as... Wasn't as experienced as I am now. I was a new leader. The previous leader had been killed in a similar attack when she showed up. So I waited. I took their advice. Well, you know what they did? They found the cairn in the middle of the night and they sent her in. Unleashed. That waiting led them right back to us. Before we were even all awake, three of them were dead. We fought. Gave it everything we had. It wasn't enough. I tried to lead her away. I tried to lead her and her forces away to save the few that were still in the cairn, that were still alive. And I thought I'd done it. She chased me. I was faster than her. So I thought I'd just have to wait till the sun. Here's the thing, Aiden. The sun didn't stop her. She just kept coming. And here's the thing about leeches. They don't get tired. So she caught up. And we fought. We fought for two straight days. Not stopping, not sleeping. She beat me. And I expected she was going to kill me, but I thought at least the others are safe. But she didn't kill me, Aiden. She did this to me.
And what I got back to the cairn, you know what I'd found? Yeah, I led her away. And she brought all the others in. And they killed every. Waiting, being patient, caring about the shields that they put around them, the walls they put up, killed our set. I don't want that to happen again. I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want that either. And as someone who's also lost, I I understand your feeling behind it. When the day comes and she does show herself again and she happens to be around, call me. I'm not as good of a fighter as you or possibly any of the others that were there, but I will stand with you. As a brother guru, I won't let her take you as well. At least not without a fight. But when it comes to the new Karen that's being built, Aspen is in charge. And she may ask us to wait, and that's her call. And I understand where you're coming from, I do. But with her being leader, her rule is law. Now we can advise and give her aid, and your expertise would be huge. I went and talked to Grandmother Willow. You can see he kind of snarls at the mention of her name, his lips, his kind of like burn scarred lips turning back and revealing the teeth. I learned some things. Your feelings for her, I understand. Especially after what had just happened. But she is willing to give you another shot. With the stipulations that are in place, I said. When I asked if you wanted to scrap, you didn't hesitate. Knowing that I was older, stronger, that I could have killed you, you didn't show the slightest weakness and the slightest bit of fear. And for that, I respect you. So yeah, I'll play her game one more time. But because I respect you, I'll tell you this. Blind leadership gets everyone killed. Following others who are unwilling to do what it takes gets everyone killed. And if you're killed, who's going to fight in your place? There are others. Okay. There, there's things that are happening here. I can't explain it. I'm new to this part of things. Guy is making plants. She's getting more. There's something else happening here. 
with the rebuilding of everything that's happening, there's something additional on the wind. I, I'm still trying to figure it out. But you say, who else will fight? More are going to show up. More are going to come. And if we get established, the nation may come and help us. I have friends up in the Northwest. I just gotta make a phone call if something really got bad. If we had enough time, they'd be here. Are you sure? Absolutely. They love a good fight. Some of the best ones I've ever seen. Their spirits might not agree. It's true. But if another spirit is being harmed, who knows what they might tell them. I appreciate your optimism. For my best qualities. I guess we'll see. If you don't mind, if you want me to keep some things, I can. But I would like to update Aspen on your current thoughts. Just so she's in the know. Especially if how they attacked the Karen the first time. The, our leader needs to know and make the plans. And like I said, your expertise would be a huge asset. If they find out we're truly back, that's where they're going to look first. So we'll build slow. Now, what's the term? Uh, the rock by rock? Brick by brick. But yeah, yeah. you got it. All right. <laughs> oh, other thing. Your um, shiny sword. How did I get one of those? Stay alive a little longer. We'll see about getting you one. They'll survive? Yeah. Seems to be the uh, common thing. Okay. It's all we've got right now. And he'll take his first drink of the beer and be... This is worse than leaf water. <laughs> yeah, Why leaf do water doesn't get you drunk. No, and you'll just put it down. All right, Kim. Like I said, I respect you. And the small one, she's sassy as fuck. Try living with her. No, thank you. He'll reaches hand out to him as he stands up a human gesture I, th I think after talks yeah he reaches out and takes your hand there may come a time where we can't wait anymore I understand I'm doing this for you I appreciate it. He gives it a squeeze. Let's it go. Well, let me know when our fearless leader needs something of me. I guess I'll just sit here and twiddle my fucking thumbs until then. Uh, do you have one of? Do you have a um the phone? Yeah, kid, I got a phone. You want to put in your. A number? It's 
plurp type numbers. There's more than one. He reaches out and takes your phone and puts it in. Okay. Thanks. He'll walk out. Make your way out into the parking lot and into the night. Not quite sure of where Ryder stands. But you're going to take his word as a fellow warrior, for now, that he will wait and that he will follow. The thing is, when you've been out of habits long enough, when you've formed new patterns, new routines, it can kind of be difficult to go back to the old ones, but there's still hope. Aspen, Joseph, you stand outside of the Hillsboro County Jail. It's a large brick building surrounded by chain link fence, barbed wire around the top. In fact, several layers of chain link fence. There's a yard off to one side where some inmates can be kind of seen moving around. Inside there's reception as well as guard checkpoints that let you in. And beyond that a processing area, interrogation rooms, and cells. As you've arrived, Taking Joseph's car. Joseph, you're still getting used to the feeling, feeling of the ill-fitted suit that Aspen made you purchase from the thrift shop. Feels kind of uncomfortable on your skin and slightly scratchy against your arms. You fiddle with the tie that she kind of helped you tie after you tried to tie it yourself several times, not having had like to tie a tie since you were a child. It's like graduation all over again. Now you have a few moments to yourself before you head in. The scene is yours. Lean over to Joseph. You doing okay? You look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be focused on other stuff soon enough. You want me eyes out, see what's in there, right? Right see what kind of things we're okay. getting ourselves into. Okay, I can do that. Um, I'll be a little distracted, um, but I'll be able to see what you're doing and hear you. Um, I'll just look a little vacant to everybody else. I'll keep a notebook and act like I'm focusing on that. That works. Pretend like you're taking notes. I got it. Uh, do Is there anything that would cause a problem during that time that maybe we should make sure we can get you out if that's an issue? I don't think. I mean, I may have to tell you that something's not happy with us there, which is what we want to know anyway. Um, in that case, we can get an important phone call. Um, actually, let me put your number on like speed dial so that I can call it from my pocket if something hits the fan and there's something coming at us um that way we can pull it away from those less able but hopefully we'll just i'll just see some messed up stuff that you would expect in a prison or jail right so fingers crossed but yeah i'll go in with eyes open and back you up perfect thank you yeah so you both climb out of the car Start making your way in to the reception and receiving area to the jail. Joseph, are you activating your penumbral senses now? Um, I would probably do it right as we go and do our initial check-in. Not in the yard, but as we get into the building. I'll okay. kick it on at that point. So heading in through the receiving area doors, you're greeted by security in the reception area who check your credentials make sure you're on the list they kind of chuckle slightly as they look down at the list Aspen Weiss from 
Mr. Ash Speaker? Yes. It's an indigenous name. Of course. Uh, you're all set. Go on through. Uh, just make sure to pass everything around the sensors there, and uh, they'll lead you to uh, meeting room six. Your first visitor should be, or your first guest should be waiting. Thank you very much. Of course. So you are kind of checked over by security who wave the wand and make you go through a metal detector. But of course you pass inspection and eventually one of the guards leads you down the hallway until you stop in front of meeting room six. They unlock the door and let you in and say, we'll be back with the first one shortly. And they close the door. At this point, Joseph, you've activated your senses, which requires a willpower, if I'm correct. Yeah, I spend one willpower, I make an intelligence plus my wisdom renown roll. I got four successes on that. Okay, four successes. We'll do it. As you blink your eyes, you're in two places at once. You see what's right in front of you, the metal table and the several metal chairs brick walls surrounding the exterior and of course aspen but also you see almost the photo negative you've come to know as the umbra laid over it and as it kind of comes into focus and comes into view. You are anything but alone. You see pattern spiders everywhere, moving up and down the walls, casting strands in an almost organized fashion as the weaver dictates, reinforcing, containing, enclosing. The umbra is very very secure here and you are fortunate to say the least to see what you see but you can see them moving along in an orderly fashion the work here very clearly long since done but constantly maintained everything is in its place everything is established everything is built the spiders move in swarms up the walls, across the ceiling, down the other side. Almost like sentries moving across, constantly making sure that everything is where it should be. Aspen, go ahead and roll me a wits and insight check as you're kind of seeing Joseph, like his eyes just following something that you can't quite see around the room. He seems to be very focused and very aware of something going on, and you can tell that there is definitely something he is seeing beyond um, this room. In that notebook in the corner of the margins, he'll be doodling a spider web uh, growing in the page. She'll just kind of look over, clock it, go back to like shuffling the case files. After a few minutes of waiting, you could hear the door kind of being unlocked and open, and you see the guards lead a young woman of Asian descent, long kind of black hair falling to her shoulders. It looks like she hasn't had makeup on in a while, but she doesn't seem too bedraggled. Maybe a little bit bags under her eyes, but you can see from her kind of mirthful smile as she walks in that this is probably the best part of her day so far. She seems very enthused to see you. Looking over your files, you know this to be Mia Nguyen, one of the members of Stheno. Uh, considered to be one of the more chipper members and positive and upbeat. She comes in 
And upon seeing you, her smile grows even wider, and she goes, Aspen! I I'm sorry, Miss Weiss! Hello! She'll guards. stand up, reach her hand out to shake hers. As she reaches out, you can see the handcuffs still on her wrist. And she shakes your hand, and then goes and kind of goes to shake Joseph's hand. Um, friend of yours? Yes, friend, advisor. Uh, he'll be sitting and and listening today. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Mia. Um, very nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Joseph. Good to meet you. She kind of goes and sits down. Um, I've never had to do this before. Is there something I'm supposed to do? Oh no, it's quite all right. I'm just gonna I'm gonna ask some questions and and figure out what we're gonna do with this case. She kind of like looks over to the guard to wait till he stands outside. He follows procedure almost after you started talking. He kind of stepped outside, closed the door and you could hear it lock. And she'll sit um, across from her. Uh, first things first, how are you? How are you doing? Well, um, could be better. I mean, it's not the worst situation, but definitely far from the best. Uh, but I mean, it's been okay. I wrote, I wrote Jessica a letter. Uh, but things have been okay. Morale is low. I try to keep everybody's hopes up and I think seeing you will help. We've been kind of wondering what what was going to happen. They wanted to set us up with a county uh, defendant, defense attorney, and I've seen enough law and order to know that those guys are kind of hit or miss. Right. Um, they are for the city. They're not for your individual interests, so it does get a little convoluted there. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, there's a lot of logistics on the outside that we were working through. No, for sure. I mean, it's, you know, got to be very busy. We're just waiting. And we're we're going to try to push up your arraignment as soon as possible to get you through with that and see if we can get bail um, approved and okay. get you guys out of here, get you guys kind of comfortable while we do the trial situation. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, so, uh what do you need from me? Do you need me to like sign anything like a contract of letting you be my lawyer? I mean, I, I, well, what, what do you need me to do? Yeah, we, we will get through all of that, um, in a little bit. Um, okay. but I mostly want to know what, what they've asked you. What are they, have they pulled you in for? Well, um, They keep asking about if we know what happened, or at least they ask me if I know what happened and why I'm here. I say, yeah, something to do with the energy plant explosion, but that I had no idea what that was about. They ask me about the internet searches. I say that we'd been asked to do some research. We weren't told why. We were asked, you know, how many people worked there, you know, what what the basic layout was, Google Maps, that kind of stuff. I mean, nothing that you couldn't do on your own, but had I known what was going to happen, I probably would have not done it or had any part of it. I mean, I thought it was just like a checking for a green initiative or, you know, going to set up a protest and knowing where we could, you know, set up shop, but Jess was kind of being vague about it. How is she? I have it on good authority that she's doing well. It's okay. hard for me to give you. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's, she's, she's fine. She's coping, but all physically, she is fine. They kept asking us where she was and I kept saying, I don't know. Cause I don't know. I mean, I wasn't going to, I wouldn't say anything even if I did know, but like she just kind of disappeared. After all that went down, and did 
she have anything to do with it? As far as I know about the situation, it is very convoluted and there are a lot of moving parts. So I couldn't in good conscience answer that question, but she is being targeted. So she is staying safe. Um, that's all I can really say about that right now. Uh, because if they do, you want to be able to be as honest as possible with them and any cross information might put you in jeopardy. Oh, the, the less I know, the better. Got it. Okay. okay. Right. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, they've asked me how long we've all known each other. They keep asking me a lot of questions about Jess. You know, what do I know about her? Where does she usually go? Like, kept trying to say that, you know, if she turned herself in, this would all be over. Offering me deals to you know, sell her out, and I would, I would never do that, but I just, I didn't have anything to say. Um, have they asked you any questions that seem odd, or off, or bleeding in any way? They seemed just really interested if Jess had been spending time with anybody else. They seem to want to know if, if she had any other friends or new friends in town. And I mean, when we'd get together, we'd usually just talk about whatever we were working on and, you know, a little bit of idle. But she's she's not a gossip like I am. <laughs> you know, she's she's not the girl talk type. She's very much like focused on what she's doing. But I mean, other than Leon and us, I didn't know of it. I mean, you'd helped us out that that other time, but, you know, nothing, nothing that I could think of, no one else knew that I could think of, but she's not been around, she wasn't around much over the past okay. few months before everything happened, she just seemed to be, like, gone a lot, and they kept asking us if we knew where she was, where she went during that time, like, they keep asking us over and over again, like we're going to remember, like we're going to know. They so seem they seem to have a particular interest in, in Jester specifically. Yeah. They really want her. Like, they seem to know about our connection, but... They're the, she's the one they're focused on. I really wish she would just come forward and we could do this the right way and then maybe we could all get out of here. I mean, if we didn't have anything to do with it, how guilty can we be? It just happened to be a coincidence that we had looked into something right before it happened. They can see that. But they just knew but they seemed to keep saying she was somehow involved and that she was very dangerous and that we would be doing good for the city and you know that she's not as she's not the person we think she is that she's hiding right. something from us in these situations also um they they need somebody uh, to take responsibility for what had happened as far as the city goes and the state and the government, um, if they look like they're not looking into it and they don't have somebody to quote unquote blame, uh, they look negligent. So that's probably what they're doing here. So they will say anything to have the whole picture. So that's probably why they want Jester. But I think it's in her best interest and your best interest, all of you, to have her separated from the situation because if they have the quote unquote again leader of the group they can come down much harder I just i don't know why i mean i guess i do understand why she would keep her head down and stay out of trouble i mean she got us the money after all to to mount a defense but like Chloe's not taking it so well. Chloe's, in fact, not been feeling the greatest about Jess for a while now. 
She's been keeping to herself mostly, not saying much. Just kind of here but not here. You know what I mean? Right. She's really upset about this. She feels abandoned. It's understandable in these situations. But again, as we've talked about, trying to do it in a way that will get you out faster and put this situation behind us as quickly as possible. Some things had to happen the way they needed to happen. And I know that's not a lot of reassurance. I know, I understand, but we are doing the best we can on our side. And we're going to get you guys out of here. Okay. I believe you. We didn't do anything wrong. I know you didn't. I believe you. Okay. The case against you is flimsy at best. Circumstantial evidence. Nothing very concrete. So hopefully we can make a... Well, I'm confident we can make a, a case for you all to put this all behind you as quickly as possible. They don't have true evidence of you at the scene or um, anything of the nature of you having been involved in explosives or anything of an illegal nature as far as that goes. So you should be, we, sh we should have a good case for you, for all of you. Okay. I. You haven't done us wrong before. It's gonna be good. It's just, I'd really like to go home. The showers here are weird. Yeah, yeah, they're a little um. Close for comfort. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well. Let me sign whatever I have to sign. Absolutely. And she'll like pull out papers. What I need from you, though, is I need you to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, at this point, because you have legal counsel, you no longer need to ask, answer questions without me present. So if they ask to speak with you, anything outside of court, you do not need to speak to them unless I am present. Okay. 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 Yeah. It'll be good. Okay. And she signs the paperwork and you explain more of the process to her and kind of go back and forth a little bit over the next few couple of hours you end up meeting with the other members of Stheno Jackson Foster and Caleb Lee and then finally Chloe Robinson as the door opens, a young woman who looks to be in her early 20s makes her way in. She looks drawn, a little bit pale. Her face looks kind of cold and emotionless as she makes her way in. Miss Weiss, good to see you again. Miss Robinson, should go to shake her hand, as she does. She shakes your hand, and you can feel warmth in it, but maybe a little bit of a chill, like somebody who's been in a cold room quite a bit, but you can still feel the warmth of, of life in it. Who's he? This is my advisor and uh, he will be taking notes and just assisting me in speaking with you all. Um, Joseph Vass, speaker. She shakes your hand, goes and sits down and Joseph, you've been watching kind of both sides and you can kind of feel this other entity kind of lingering over her, almost as if her shadow extends a little further than the lights of this room would cast it. 
You're not quite sure what it is, but there is something that seems to be riding shotgun with Chloe. A presence, a cold, kind of hopeless presence. Very similar to the presences you found around, sound, felt around Eliza. Not as potent, not as well-formed, but there. So, what do you want to know? Well, first off, are you doing okay? Well, I've been in jail for months, waiting for Jester to show her face. To come forward and resolve this whole mess and clear up this whole thing. Because she can't be bothered, we've had to sit and wait while they look for her. So, okay isn't exactly the word I'd use to describe it. I understand your frustration. I really do. And we, we want to get you out of here as soon as we can. And we are doing everything on our side to get you out of here. Great. Cool. And I can't offer more comfort than that, unfortunately, and I apologize. Then maybe you can tell me what the fuck she's up to. What do you mean? I assume you've talked to her. I assume that she's the one who sent you here to put this whole thing together. And I'm grateful for that. Believe me, I am. The last time her and I spoke, she said there were things happening, but that she couldn't talk about it. So, you're a lawyer, and I'm sure that she's trying to help us as best as she can, like the benevolent soul she is. But what has she been doing? Why is this happening? Because of the situation you're in, I can't speak to that at the moment. But there were circumstances that linked you and her and the rest of your friends to a situation that had nothing to do with you. That it had to do with her? That is not what I said. Because of her presence online, she has certain people who would see her downfall for what she stands for. And that is what's happening here. And that is the most information I can give you to protect you and to protect this case. I would have fought with her. I would have stood with her. But she left us out to dry. Do you know what it's like to have police kick down your door and drag you out of bed in the middle of the night? To parade you out like some sort of fucking criminal? No, I do not have that experience. But I bet it's awful. Yeah, and when you look for your best friend when you're getting processed and thrown in a cell only to find out that she can't be found. She's missing. Missing for weeks. And that you're just left here. Waiting. Always waiting for her. Always taking her half-truths, her veiled and vague answers, Her, maybe I'll tell you one days, and her, I can't let you knows. How is a friendship supposed to stick with that? I tell her everything. 
We built this together. And she's letting it fall. It's none of your concern, though. Listen, Miss Robinson, I understand. I understand that it's frustrating and there's not a lot of answers right now. And in a place like this, that could be especially worrisome and fearsome. I, I, and I will say we, haven't forgotten you. We are doing, we are doing everything we can with the means we have. We. Yeah. I can't speak for your relationship with her. I don't know it. But what I know is that I would like to get you out of here. And that's a conversation to have with her. But I need to know what's happening in here so I can get you out so those conversations can be had. Nothing is happening in here, Miss Weiss. We're waiting. I'm sure they are asking you questions. Could you? Of course they're asking us questions, but we can't answer any of them. What do we know? That we did a little poking around? That there was a little bit of hacking done. That we got answers for a problem that we can't actually know what the problem is. That we're just... That we were just fucking tools to be used. You know what the thing is with tools? You use them enough and eventually they break. And you discard them and buy new ones. Well, I'm done being used, Miss Weiss. They're not asking us anything that we don't, that we can do anything about. We've told them everything we know. Listen, I can't speak to the frustrations you have for the situation between you and her. I cannot. I don't know anything about it. But I am here to help you, and I am here to be your counsel. So if you could answer the questions of what they are asking you so I can get you out of here so you metaphorically don't have to be that tool for that person anymore and you can go lead your own life, I would like to do that for you, but I cannot do that if we are going to sit here and be at odds the whole time. Go ahead and give me a charisma and persuasion check. I can also add my favor from mm -hmm. my falcon. Yes. Yep. That is seven with a critical. You can kind of see her hunched shoulders kind of slump a little bit. You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be frustrated with you. I would be saying all this to her and you shouldn't be in the middle of it. They've been asking a lot about the energy plant, about the meeting we had with her days before, about what we found out, about some of our past protests and activities. But they ask a lot about her. And that is... For the first couple days, I didn't say anything. Solidarity and the like. 
didn't feel like it was my place, and I felt like Jester would show up eventually, and then we could figure out what our next steps were. But after a month, with no jester, and no arraignment, and no lawyers, and no help, I met with Bateman himself. He asked me about jester, and then he started asking me about her family. And I don't know if it was the frustration or the being abandoned or the fact that this is just another one of her things coming back to bite me in the ass. I told them everything I knew about Jester. About Colorado, about her family. And they, he, seemed happy with that. And I haven't had to talk to him since. Good thing, too. Guy has shark eyes. Was there anything in particular that he seemed mostly interested in? Um extremely interested in throughout all of the things that you told him about Chester. Well, yeah. He wanted to know about her relationship with her mom. In fact, he had a lot of questions about her mom. so sick of talking about her. I'm so sick of hearing her name. I'm so sick sitting here and rotting for her. If she would just talk to me, I could help her. I don't know what came over me. I'm better than this. No matter how mad I am at her, usually I can just bottle it all up and keep it all inside and talk to her about it face to face, but it just didn't feel like that was ever going to happen again. For all I knew, she left the country. I understand that. I understand it. I seem it. convinced that because she hasn't turned herself in, that's an admission of guilt. And you know what? Maybe she is guilty. Maybe she did something and we are suffering the collateral damage of that. But if she'd have just told me, I'd have been right by her side. Or maybe I could have talked her out of it. My best fucking friend. Well, I can tell you that there seems to be a special interest in her because of her platform. What? Her TikTok? Her Instagram reels? She was harassed because of it. I know that. I have that on good authority, so I know Who that has happened. doesn't get harassed because of this? Who doesn't get offered to get bought out? Who doesn't get offered, told to shut up? That's why we do it. Because we're right. not afraid. I understand that. But is that more information than you had before? No. She had told me. Okay. Thank 
thank you. I appreciate everything you're doing. And I know that you are trying your hardest and that you are doing everything you can. And I can be patient a little bit longer. And I appreciate you. Thank you for saying that. And I wish I could give more to you in these moments. You're already giving a lot by being here. Nobody's been here for weeks. They barely let us see each other for a while. They kept us separate. We're going to get you out of here. I do need to ask you not to speak to anyone else unless I'm present. Yeah, clients privilege, right? Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this is happening to you. Is she okay? That's all I care about. Is she okay? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else? No, not at this time. And she'll put over the papers to sign. Signs the papers. And then gets up and walks over to the door and knocks on it. The guard opens it. And kind of leads her out. The door closes. And you have a few minutes. Just the two of you to speak. She just kind of slumps back into her chair. Oof. She doesn't have long. Okay. You saw something? Yeah. Um, a shadow like on Eliza. All right. It's not manifest yet. I couldn't get a good view, but it's there. And now we know that uh, one of our biggest problems has somebody else that Jester cares about, possibly, potentially. Yeah, that may help the case, though, too. We can get him on a mistrial, right? If he's going out of the scope of the uh, investigation, that could look bad. If he's not better than that, sneakier than that, clever, more clever than that. Yeah, but if we get... Oh, they don't record these. But oh, no. we can get something. <laughs> yeah. Um if we can get anything on that or if there's, we notice anything happening with the family we can connect it something to keep our fingers crossed for right we could try it um, we could speak with Jester's mom she doesn't really talk about her family but we could speak with them and see if there was any harassment that happened there see if yeah. we can find a substantial link between the two because that could help our case yes absolutely but we no. need to get them out soon yeah especially her the others are holding out, but something's grabbed onto her. And I don't like this place. Ugh, I don't like this place. Even seeing it just on one side, I wouldn't want to see it on both. So thank you for that. As you kind of start packing up your goods and get ready to leave, just as you're walking towards the door, the door opens. And in the door stands Edward Bateman. Miss Weiss, I was hoping I would run into you. You can can wait outside, he says, staring at Joseph. Joseph, go ahead and give me a intelligence and resolve check. Edward Bateman is a tall, very much upstanding, rich lawyer type. Clean-shaven, square-jawed, slick black 
hair in a very tailored, very fine, very expensive suit. He stands with perfect posture and carries himself with a superiority that can be felt by any that are near him. How many successes did you get? I got two after spending a willpower, so I'm going to go step outside. Joseph, you immediately feel compelled of your own will to go step outside. Too many spiders in here. Side of the door. He closes the door. Well, it looks like Crafty has spent her blood points to reroll an entire dice pool if you would like to try one more time. However, your willpower's been spent, so I will not let you spend a willpower again. Four successes. Four successes. That still won't do it. You step outside, closing the door behind you. Seems like your idea, but this is none of your business. Miss Weiss, have a seat, please. I think we need to talk about the situation. He goes and kind of takes a handkerchief out of his suit pocket and dusts off the metal chair before sitting down and kind of crossing his legs. I'm surprised Miss Hart didn't come herself, but I figure we should talk about this situation. Now I have your friends on conspiracy. I have your friends on illegally accessing sensitive information of a company that experienced an unfortunate circumstance just a night or so later. I have them tied to an individual who is evading justice after being issued a warrant for their arrest. But I believe, just as you believe, that they didn't know what they were doing, and therefore they are not the direct problem here. But the city needs justice. It can't allow lawless individuals, no matter their cause, to be acting out of place like this. The people need to know they're safe. They were greatly inconvenienced by their loss of power for those several days. And I can't give them nothing. I wouldn't be doing my job. I agree with that. I will let the other members of Stheno out on parole and time served in exchange or the one they call Malicious Jester. She will have a trial. And we can deal with things the legal way and let her ignorant friends go. Or? Or they stay. And I can probably throw some terrorism charges on this as well. And I have enough here to make it stick. And they can take a visit to a little island penitentiary, as most terrorists do. If Jester isn't willing to stand for her crimes and face justice, someone has to. And we can go to trial about this. But I have enough. I have... That's interesting, because you did just say you only have conspiracy. I have enough to connect the crime 
through the research. In fact, I have enough to place Jester at the scene of the crime. But not the rest of them. I don't need the rest of them. I have the connection to them. They conspired, er, committed conspiracy, aided a terrorist attack. Right, but you have no connection to them at the scene of the crime. So therefore, all they still have is conspiracy. You have nothing proving that they knew the intentions of the supposed, alleged evidence of Jester being there. There is no evidence saying that they have any information on what she was doing or how she was doing it. Miss Weiss, was Obama bin Laden in New York on September 11th of 2001? I don't think that's relevant to this conversation. When it comes to terrorism, it very much is. You don't have to be present to have been complicit. You have an interesting way of doing things. Wouldn't Justice say morally correct served. is, you know, what we all said under oath we would work towards, but I understand that not every one of us is going to do what we were meant to do. The law is the law, Miss Weiss. We need to keep dangerous people where they belong. Then uh, could you answer me why you were looking into anything about uh, Jester's mother? Just a bit of context. Understanding where these dangerous, violent, and impulsive urges came from. Perhaps I need to have a therapist at the trial to see if there is something in her past that could have caused her to lash out so violently. Perhaps the conspiracy runs deeper, just doing my due diligence. Listen, Mr. Bateman, I understand we are on both I, opposite sides of this situation. And I understand you have a certain way of doing things. But I will be doing this on my terms. And I don't make deals with devils. I'm not the devil, Miss Weiss. I'm just a man doing what he's been tasked to do and serving his city. That makes two of us. So why don't we skip the pleasantries and tell me where she is? Go ahead and roll intelligence and resolve. I'm going to spend a willpower okay. because I'm going to try and get as many successes as I can. Five. You feel a pressure 
on your mind. You feel a pull as you kind of look into his eyes. His gaze kind of becomes like a sinking black pool. But you don't have to do what he says. That's confidential information, and why would I know anyways? Thanks for your time. This was a great conversation, and she'll walk out. It was a great conversation indeed. Very enlightening. So you step outside to Joseph, who's standing in the hallway. Joseph, you know you went out there for a reason, and that it was your idea, that you thought it was a good idea, but... Spiders, man. <laughs> There's spiders everywhere. Okay. So you leave. She's, she's gonna look at Joseph like so wide eyed, like walked out casually, caught Joseph's eyes, and was like, <laughs> just starts walking. Yeah, let's go. You make your way out quickly, getting into the car and driving away. Aspen, there is a chill in your heart because for a moment, just a split second, you felt like you were losing control of yourself. You head home. Artie is there to meet you. To ask how it went. But you can't even say a word because of the kind of freeze you feel in your heart and that is where we're going to end tonight's session however we open on a room similar to this interrogation room that we were just in in fact, it is the exact same interrogation room where Edward Bateman sits, his legs crossed still, at the table. The door behind him opens, and we still see the silhouette of about a five foot five stocky woman with very short curly hair atop her head. She seems to be wearing a motorcycle leather jacket and ripped jeans she says well he kind of smiles and says they're back we then cut to the next day a press conference for Edward Bateman and Mia Nguyen stand on the stairs at the prison. Mia Nguyen says to reporters that she confesses that she knew all about the attack on the energy plant and that she had passed the information to malicious jester knowing that she was going to participate in the attack and begging jester to turn herself in and that is where we will officially end our session thank you so much to these amazing players thank you to all of you watching at home things are heating up the bad guys are getting bad and Bloody Mary is on the board. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the social media listed at the bottom of the screen. Go watch past episodes of Rage Across Tampa. If you aren't caught up, you should get caught up so that you can know just how dangerous things are getting. A big thank you to Preston, Champ, and Simon, the amazing players who make this happen. And I cannot wait to have nori back at the table this week on thursday we have don't get caught 
On Saturday, we have After Dark. On Sunday, we have Bloody Strings. And then we'll be back for Rage Across Tampa. And very, very special announcement on a week from Friday. What the hell is that? Our Hunter the Reckoning stream debuts. So stay tuned to the schedule to catch all of those amazing streams. And we can't wait to have you back here. Thank you so much for joining us. And have a very, very wonderful evening. Good night, everyone. This has been a St. Petersburg by Night production. Rage Across Tampa is produced in agreement with the World of Darkness and Dark Pack. The storyteller for Rage Across Tampa is Kent. Tonight's characters were voiced by Preston, Champ, Nori, and Simon. Visit our website at stpetebynight.com for more information about all of our productions and how you can become part of our community. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Fangs, stakes, and claws out.